Engineering Uganda. Yes, a very good evening to you tuned in to UBC TV. Thank you so much for following all our programs and welcome to this week's edition of UBC One on One with Michael Jordan Lukomoa. We thank you so much for watching all our programs and here is this edition. Now, for some good time we've heard of stories of disenfranchisement of land rights from people in one part of this country called Bunyoro. Yeah. Yes. How factual is this? We are going to have a discussion with a leader of one of the entities that is spearheading a voice of these people who think that something wrong is happening in their community and get to understand it, all of us as Ugandan, then we shall know exactly what they think would be the right thing to be done in their community. Join me, welcome Mr. Doviko Baleke. Batwale. Oh, I beg your pardon. Batwale. Mr. Doviko Batwale, Batwale yeah. he is the coordinator, Bunyoro Kitara Reparations Agency. Yeah. We are also going to understand this organization more here on this talk show yeah. this evening. Okay. Mr. Batwale, yes, sir. we are so glad to have you on this show. Uh, so glad to you. First of all, yes, sir. tell us about Bukitarepa, Bunyoro Kitara Reparations, Reparations. Agency. Yeah. What is the organization about? The organization uh actually you have asked a very good question mm. it's me who started that organization you started it yourself yes mm -hmm. uh, i was like trying to find a way of how we could we sort out of neural issues without involving the politics in them okay so we i went deep deep in doing research and this one started in the year 2000. We managed to find some illegalities within the process or within the, our historical injustices, which we registered an organization in order to address them legally, but not politically. Mm -hmm. For the first time ever, Bunyoro issues were being politicized. Okay. If Anything happens to Munyoro, everyone runs to the president. Everyone goes to the, to the government. Have you seen? So we said, but the, see, some of these problems originated before Uganda became independent. So I did, what I did was to go down deep, do the research, and find out what went wrong. Okay. And I want to assure you, the research I did actually led us to what we are today just at this point first yes bunyoro kitara reparations agency yes. let us start with what are these issues you the, said bunyoro kitara issues uh, were mishandled yeah. uh, by handling them politically yes exactly we will get to know what handling them politically means, means but exactly. what are the issues the issues of this organization is to address no, what are those issues that you discovered that were being okay standard? one yeah. was the land rights okay. how could the banyoro have lost land uh to colonialism to colonialists okay. during that period of time mm. two is it true the colonialists took Bunyoro land illegally or was an illegal act okay three who were the culprits four was how can we address this injustice and then like come to the level of any other and, and of any other ugandan tribe so that we can harmoniously enjoy our ancestral land mm. in peaceful in peaceful way but i want to tell you by the time this program ends you see that, that what i have discovered is not only for Bunyoro, mm. is also for the entire indigenous tribes that were in uganda before this country got independence so those were the issues yes yes, yes. bunyoro's land that was taken yes. before independence before independence yes. um po po political kind of decisions that were made exactly yes in not in favor of bunyoro not not in favor of bunyoro yes before independence yes yes and things like that yes so how political were the solutions that you're talking about that uh the issues were handled politically mm. how okay and who in fact and who in fact they, they, that's a very good question yes the issues of Munyoro was politicized i mean was politicized became a political issue when uganda got independence 
And that one could be the reason why this country has never or we never get stable. Not until when these underlying issues have not been addressed. Mm. One, when Bunyolo lost land in the 1900 agreement between Uganda and Britain, mm. Uganda thought it had got something for itself. Okay. But also Uganda lost. How? I, I, what I'm saying, Uganda lost land mm. in the center here in Kampala. Mm. Because as the Uganda kept quiet for the land, they, 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 I mean for the territory they got, they benefited from Britain, they also lost the land in Kampala, which were given to Indian soldiers who participated in the war with Kabarega. Mm. Mm. Up to today, we have grown up, we have gone to school telling us, you know, Indians came to Uganda when they were building railway lines. Who told you? These Indians were brought from India by British to fight Kabarega and the number of soldiers that came, I mean, was got from India, mostly Goa, were 80,000 soldiers, Indian soldiers. Then they also got 38,000 Baganda soldiers. They also got 45,000 Nubian soldiers. And then they went to Bunyoro to raid Bunyoro. Mm. So after they committed the genocide, which I'm to tell you in the uh, ahead of this program, now the Britons decided to award the Baganda with the territories that belong to Bunyoro and concede it in 1900. They also, in 1900, they also told the Baganda that even the lands that were given to Indians should not be talked about, which is Kampala now. Mm. Then the Nubians were also given land in Bombo, where, where you had some, some time back, not mm. very far, the Nubians were claiming for their ancestors, yes. for, their, for Bombo, mm. land in Bombo against the Kabako, the Buganda, the Buganda Kingdom. Yes. So those conflicts are as live as yesterday. Why so long say? as they attack the fundamental rights of the indigenous people that existed by then and they are still in existence up to today. So, the political question, have you seen where the political question mm, comes from? Mm. Now, at the, the independence the, the of the colonial Uganda, system taking uh -huh, the decision. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I can say, in, uh, in, a, in a language, I can say the president of Uganda now is the governor of Britain. Okay. Because whatever Britain left here has never been changed. The president of Uganda is acting like the governor of the colonial master. Mm. Because the funny issues that brought injustices in this country has never at all been addressed now, in any forum. Okay. Mm. The colonial system yes. brought all the communities in a territory called Uganda. Uganda, yes. Into one, let me say, one basket. In one basket, exactly. But when you read the 1900 mm. agreement, what they call B Uganda proper is the Buganda area. Not Ankole, not Lango, not Busoga, not Acholi. So are you saying, yes. in real sense, mm. the agreement would not be binding to other communities? No, that are not, not to Buganda. other communities who are not signatories. That's right. I have gone to an extent of looking from the British archive to get the gazette of where, when they were gazetting Uganda. I found out that they based on an agreement that was drawn by Sir Gordon Porto and the, the Kabak of Uganda by then, Mwanga. Mm. In that London gazette, they are saying Uganda proper is the kingdom of Uganda. But it's also bounded by Ankori, which, uh, which is Ankori of today, Usoga, which is Busoga of today, Unyoro, which is Unyoro of now, then Koki. <laughs> then why do you say mm. it doesn't bind all of those communities? No, it is talking about bordering. Uganda proper is, bo okay. eh, is bordering, but they are not part of the British gazette that gazetted the country called Uganda today. Would you love that to be the status quo? No. I wouldn't have loved this to be the status quo. Mm -hmm. I would love to address this one. Because it is as if it is the origin of the political instability in this country. 
when you say political instability in mm. Uganda, mm. what exactly do you mean? A meaning whereby uh, is Uganda not stable politically to you? It has never been stable since independence. Do you know why? Tell us. You know why? Mm. It ha the political. Uh, I'm actually what we could we could say the political. Uh, the political design that was designed for this country mm. was not to dig deep into solving the issues, but it was to look for who can conceal these injustices and then take over Uganda. In regard to whether those concealments are addressed or not, have you seen? Mm -hmm. I see things in a totally different way. I'm sorry to say this. We have got so many people here who are educated, who are professors. But really, I really wonder why people have never known why was Uganda proper called the agreement that was drawn between Sagod and Poto and the Kabaka of Mwanga in 1894. But later and on, then we, gazetted. later on, we get the 1900 agreement. Yes. Did not expand Uganda, what you call Uganda proper now, mm -hmm. to accommodate all these other communities? No. The 19 agreement also sacked some territories that were, eh, that were gifted without the knowledge of those people. This is what we are trying to address in Bukitalipa. We are saying Bunyoro wasn't part of the 1900. How comes its territories formed the agreement of 1900? Have you seen? Mm -hmm. and, don't, and also the land rights of the indigenous Bunyoro there, I mean at that time, was taken over by the 1900 agreement. And by then, by the way, mm. Bunyoro had never entered any agreement with Britain whatsoever. Okay. So it was until when 1933, when Bunyoro sat, or when the British governors sat with Bunyoro to enter into the first agreement with Bunyoro. But remember, when the territories had already been annexed to 1900 agreement, that was now 33 years. What was discussed about the, the territories that had been taken, as you say? Yes. in the 1933 agreement between Bunyoro and the colonial No, they were forcing Bunyoro to, to know that that is no longer t its territory. Have you seen? Mm. I, I happened to come from Shibari, or oh, Buyaga and Buganga, yes. which, which was part. Mm. And that's why I'm fighting tirelessly to address this injustice. Because the people in those lost countries, counties, mm. the indigenous Bunyoro, were not a party to this agreement. Nor did Britain bought this ancestral land from the indigenous Spaniel by then in order to have a legal capacity to transfer it or take it in the 1900 agreement as a property owned by Britain then given to Buganda. Have you seen that, in just, that illegality? Mm. So it, it, these people never did it in Union alone. But later on, yes. is it 1967? Yes. We get these uh, counties mm. given back to Bunyoro. Mm in a referendum. A referendum 1964. 1964, yes, thank yeah, you. Yeah. How is it still a problem? How are they still a problem uh -huh. with the community in Bunyoro? It was politically declared that has returned back to Bunyoro. But the title, land titles issued therein was never returned. So you can't say we've turned your soul to your ancestral home mm. when your body is somewhere else. Have you so, seen? What do the titles in Uyaga and Buganga is of today mm. read? They are reading my land titles. My land was introduction introduced introduced by Britain and it was a reward of for Buganda participants who participated during the Kabalega war. Mm. How are these historical problems mm. affecting the people in Bunyoro today? Yeah, the historical problems are affecting people in Bunyoro today because the economic factor of the ancestral land was taken away. In the whole of Bunyoro? In the whole of Bunyoro, let me tell you. Ah. In the whole of Bunyoro, leave alone the territories, the Masaza that was actually titled with my land titles, mm. in Hoima, in Blisa today, I'm talking of the district you know now, then if you go to Masindi today, mm most of that area has crown land titles, game reserves, forest reserves. And that, do you know what it means? No. It means all of them, when Uganda became independent, Uganda inherited all these assets for free. Uganda 
the country inherited represented by the government yes now, of uganda owns yes all all the forest reserves all the game reserves in the Bunyoro sub region it inherited it but and those features that are supposed to be in the hands of the central government no the laws has changed by the way the laws has changed if you ask the government, because there is a case which Bukitalepa has sued the for National Forest Authority and the Attorney General in court. Mm -hmm. So one day the judge said, you go and see if you can understand one another, you can, you can sort it out. When we talk to these people, they told us, but for us as government, we inherited this forest from colonialists. And here, by law, they are saying government under Article 32, uh, Article, uh, no, 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 Article 26. Yes. You cannot acquire someone's property illegally. You have to pay. So in other words, I'm saying not only the forest in Mnyoro, but even the forest in Uganda, which were taken over by the government at independence, even up to today, mm. are supposed to be claimed by Baganda indigenous people. Such features are held by government yeah. in the trust of the citizenry. Uh -huh. It yes. happened in Kenya. There is a, a case which has been handled by court in or uh, African Union court. Actually, everything government holds, mm. be it this UBC TV, yes. they are holding it in trust yes. of the citizenry of Uganda. But it not, is a property but, of the citizenry. But not the land. That's why the constitution is saying... How different is the two? Is between the, the two? You can hold something that benefits the community, maybe the hospital, uh, maybe an administrative block, but not the land. Never. In Uganda here, not the land. Because what the land is... remained in the hands of Ugandans, but not the government of Uganda. In Kenya, where Kenya was a prote I mean a colony, the British took over the land from Kenyans. Mm. And when it went, it left the land in the hands of the independent Kenyan government. Here, Uganda was a protectorate. The issue that was in Uganda is totally different from Kenya because the British had the role to protect us with our properties, not to take away the land issue or even to interfere with everything. In Bunyoro, if I am to go to Hoima now, yes, yes. what are the problems that are in the area, in the yes. territory of Bunyoro? Generally now. That are a result of the injustice that you're talking exactly. about. Uh, okay. Uh, the problems that are in Bunyoro, which are uh, as a result of the colonial justice, Bunyoro land has been customary for more than 3,000 years ago. Yes. We have never titled our ancestral land. It was defended by our ancestral, our ancestors' blood, and that blood is there protected. But today, when the Bunyoro people supported the NRA who swore, because the president had talked of addressing the historical justice. Okay. So these sons of Pinoro went and joined the NRM and said, ah, we have now found a what? Uh, an ally mm. who can really address our issues. These Banyoro fought tirelessly. Even they used to do everything to see that this war succeeds. But after the 30 years of this government, the government has embarked on ferrying so many people from the Republic of Rwanda into Bunyoro. Why do you think it is government that ferries them? No, I have evidence. Ha have you seen government I, trucks? Exactly. Have no. you seen buses with if uh, we are, Ministry of if so we and so? allowed to give evidence, mm -hmm. I have letters. Even the president himself writing that I think we did a mistake. Uh, Ferried so many people in Tubunyoro without correcting the historical message. They even talked about if I took a thousand, uh, thousand migrants over Fulki into Karamoja and then the Karamojong acts violently, we just we, we think that the Karamojong are bad enough. All oh, the policy we are doing is wrong. Have you seen? Mm -hmm. This is President's what? Once yeah. later, even he, he signed on it. Mm. So, I have got so many other letters that are pinning the Republic of Uganda who has been fully participated in settling Banyarwanda in Bunyuru. You have seen it with your yes, eyes? Yes, I've seen it. Actually, I took them to the African Union Court. 
as an evidence. L let me ask, yes. just as we, we take a break. Mm. I've seen Congolese in Kampala, mm. I've seen Indians in Busoga, mm. I've seen uh, Banyoro in Kampala, yeah. I've met Banyoro in Arua, in Arua I've yes. met Bagisu yes. in Kasese. I've met Banyarwanda, actually I've went to school with uh, Banyarwanda, yes. I've went to school with uh, Indian children. Yes. What is wrong with Banyarwanda coming to settle in Bunyoro? And, and before I answer that question, who are the Banyarwanda? The Banyarwanda are the citizens of people coming from the Republic of Rwanda. Yes. What it's is not a tribe. Yes. What is wrong with them? Settling anywhere in Uganda. Like exactly now, Just like we have Ugandans, Banyoro, Bagisu, Baganda, uh, Lugbar uh, in the UK and America and let, elsewhere. Let, let me change. Uh, I mean, let me come close to what I am I'm telling you. Yes. The Banyarwanda means a citizenship of those people coming from Rwanda. Mm -hmm. While when you go to Rwanda, you find Abatusi as a tribe, yes. Abakutu as a tribe, mm -hmm. and Abatwa as a tribe. Mm -hmm. It's like in Uganda, you live here and you go and tell the General Kagame and say, uh, General Kagame, I want in your constitution to put a tribe called Abana Uganda. Yeah? A tribe called Bana Uganda in your mm -hmm. constitution. If he accepts, uh, if what he accepts, would be wrong with that? <laughs> if he accepts, it mm. means any tribe of Ugandan citizens, you are part and partial of the Republic of Rwanda. Now Rwanda becomes your home. Let's take a short break. Let, let, let's take a short break. We are going to start from there. Exactly. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Let's take a short break. On return, I want Mr. Batwale to explain more and make us understand why it is wrong for a Rwandese or a Rwandan to settle in Bukedea, in Amuria, in Hoima, or in Mbale. Thank you so much for watching. This isn't just a girl. She is the future. This is a teacher, a doctor, a community leader, our future president. She is our family's pride. And as her father, I will protect her from child marriage and talk to her about the dangers of teenage pregnancy. We each have a role to play in empowering our teenage girls to protect them from child marriage and pregnancy because when we empower them, we empower our nation. Protect the girl, save the nation. Take action. Report any case of defilement or child marriage to the police or call Saudi 116. This weekend on UBC. You are watching the best entertainment show around Kampala, and guess what? I'm done running. UBC one on one with Michael Jed and Lukomwa. We are discussing issues to do with justice, stroke injustice in Bunyoro, which is looked at as historical. We want to know how true is the claim, and towards the end, we'll know what their suggestion is about how this can be solved. Mm. Thank you so much for watching. My guest is Mr. Dovico Batwale, he's the coordinator of an organization called Bunyoro Kitara Reparations Agency. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. And welcome back from the break. Okay. By the time we went for a break, you were explaining mm. why you think it is an illegality mm. for somebody from anywhere mm. to settle in Bunyoro. Mm. Continue and telling I was, I was actually highlighting... Because I gave an example of yes. Uganda, and today we have them in Saudi Arabia, yes. everywhere, all yes. over the world. Yes, it is true. Uche, if a Munyarwanda mm. Just an opportunity yes, for Cheo to settle in, in Bulisa. Yes. What is wrong with that? Uh, uh, okay. What I'm talking about, mm. first of all, is to generalize a citizenship of a country into our national constitution. That was an error. That was an error to say in Uganda there is a tribe, a sub tribe called Banyarwanda. Mm. When in Rwanda, the Banyarwanda are actually 
all the tribes, the citizens. It is a citizenry. It's like a, as I'm, I'm telling you, you can't go to Kagame and tell him that, okay, I want in your constitution to put a tribe called Banda Uganda. Because Banda Uganda is a citizen of those people coming from Uganda. Mm. So here, in our national constitution, there is a Banyarwanda. Exactly. Of over people called Abanyarwanda. We are recognizing a citizenship of the country into our country. We are convert it's like we are converting the citizenship of two countries into one. You are bringing the Banyarwanda into Uganda generally. The Bahutu, the Batusi, the Batwa as part of your country. Now that's where this is where I want to expound on that. These are people who have been here for so long. Yes. Actually, the, the intermarriages and the interconnections of all the communities in Uganda mm. and Rwanda yes. is intense and yes. is historical. Yes. In some tribes, there are even clans that were given to them. Mm. When you hear a name, you know this is somebody with a Rwandan background. Yes. You get? Uh, yes. This is an ancient kind of discussion. Yes. yes. Why do you find a problem today to where, deal with them? Exactly. Why am I, I finding, want to know why you find where you find a problem. Where I find a problem mm. is, and this one is a general problem. I mean, it may not be Bunyoro. I don't want to use. I actually focus on Bunyoro. Okay. Why there is a problem, mm. and why am I talking about Banyarwanda? Mm. In the Bunyoro, what we are foreseeing is the community of all the Banyarwanda moving massively as a community to occupy a specific indigenous tribe in its ancestral land. Rwanda is a, a, a small country. Yes. But it cannot contain its population. Mm. When the population grows, the conflict of land also grows. Also grows. Mm. Now, I'm foreseeing a scenario whereby legalizing the Banyarwanda into our national constitution was intended to make or to sort out some of Rwanda's problem of land ownership so that they can be taken as if they are part and partial of the Ugandan tribes. Really? Oh, yes. In whose interest was that? The country, the government has interest in it, I can say. How? Because this is the government of Uganda. Mm. How would it, would it have an interest mm. in saving a Rwandan problem? I, I, let me tell you, I have never been a politician. Yes. If you ask a politician or a member of parliament who was there when they were turning Banyarwanda as a, 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 a sub-tribe of Uganda into our national constitution, who were they? What were they looking at? How comes the Banyarwanda have lived here for so many years and they have never been part of your constitution? Mm. And why today? And then after they have been made part of our constitution, now they are moving families massively to be part of the Republic of Uganda because constitutionally they are part of you. And this is what is causing land, uh, land, mm -hmm. it's called what, what? Differentization. Land differentization mm -hmm. of, of, of our rights. Mm -hmm. This one does not only end in Munyoro. The Bagisha should also look at themselves. The Bateso should also look at themselves. The Acholis, the Baganda, the, back, the, back, the back, the back. I'm going to ask you again. Yes, yes. As Bukitarepa and all of you, mm. don't you think this will make you look like sectarian people? No, it cannot or be. Or people that are opening wounds no. of sectarianism and tribalism in Uganda. No, what, what we are trying to address here, we are mm. saying Uganda is a unique country. It's a unique country in nature that God created each tribe in Uganda with its ancestral origin. The birds and the cows of Ankole are known as Nyankole. Mm. Even the rats can listen to the Nyankole language. <laughs> Even the birds. Yes. The Banyankole comes from Ankole mm. and their ancestral origin is Ankole. In other words, they, uh -huh, they that possess land. that radical title mm. as their heritance mm. of the ancestral land. Yes. The Baganda the same. The Bateso the same, yes. the Bagisu the same, mm. the Banyankole, the Bacholis, the Langis, the Arus, the Batoro, the Bakonjo the same. Yes. But here we are seeing a tribe of Banyarwanda who has never been within the borders of this country at independence taking over 
yes, creating confusion within Ugandans, taking over their land. And they are so greedy to an extent when they come, they want to become members of parliament, they want to, go to occupy positions of leadership, they, so that legally they can confiscate and take over Ugandans from their ancestral land. And tomorrow, if we are not wise, you will find this country has so many members of parliament at the floor of parliament who are disguising to be either uh, coming from Buganda when they're actually using their numbers mm. to create districts, to create constituencies and to, for, to forward so many members of parliament. At the floor of parliament, like in Bunyoro now, mm. as we talk, there are so many people who are non-indigenous Bunyoro presenting Bunyoro sub-region at the floor of parliament. Do you know what it means? What does it mean? It, is, it confiscates the rights of Banyoro to participate in the political arena of their region, even distorting the level of presentation at the national parliament. Is that recognized anywhere? In it the is illegal. Of Uganda, it is that, illegal. That a Munyoro has a, an entitlement to represent Bunyoro. It is illegal. Because where <laughs> I. We have had an, uh, an MP uh, of Indian origin in, uh, Kampala. in Kampala. Exactly. Even in Tororo. Thank you very much. That's okay. Mm. Because that indigenous. In we have had a mayor in much Exactly. Here. That's what I'm saying. Dr. Ian Clark. That Indian member of parliament yes. never went to India to ferry all Indians to come back to Mbari and vote for him. Have you seen where. where, where <laughs> have you seen the difference? Okay. What I'm seeing in this country. Is so, your, your point is, yes. in his endeavors to become an MP, yes, he, he was, had no hidden agenda. No, he was, he was actually voted by, by the, the, indigenous... The themselves. He, thank you so by much. By the, 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 the Japadolas in the, the, Tororo themselves. Exactly, themselves. But he never went to India to fail in people from India. To vote for him. And put them in the voters' register and then vote for them. That's how, what is happening in Ibunyoro. You are opening wounds we are actually of... Not, historical mm. occurrences yes things that happened 3000 years ago 300 mm. years ago yes don't you think they will cause more problems today no we are not and we are not, you're not only opening mm. but you're mixing mm. issues of 300 years ago mm. and issues that are current yes and you're going to cause a problem no let me tell you that's why they say in the bible i don't read i don't normally read the bible but they say uh, is it they call it the stone over the what mm. that the, 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 the stone that would have built would have been would have you know the, 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 an important stone was forgotten was forgotten mm. you cannot build a country at a, a basis of an injustice it will never happen it will never happen that's why we, we are trying to show the world, oh, as I'm talking to you here, mm. I'm trying to open the eyes of those Ugandans who are still sleeping, that we are in danger. Actually, I was going to ask you that. Yes, we are we in danger. We have not had vibrant complaints of the same yes, in other places. Because so many people have not seen it. Why do you think should I be the first person to hear this? Tell Can me. I give you the answer? Give me. <clears throat> we resisted the colonialism. When all other tribes of Uganda has never known the behind motive of these colonialists, it took other tribes in Uganda 60 years to realize that actually these people came to colonize us. So can you take me as that wise Munyoro who resisted colonialism and other tribes of Uganda saw it after 60 years? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Am I saying? No, I, 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 I get it. Yes, so address me uh, as a Munyoro an intelligent Munyoro of that kind to be here, like opening the eyes of so many Ugandans on what I'm talking about. It was illegal for this country to have stand a citizenship of another country called Banyarwanda into our national constitution. Do you think can, this can be reversed? And how? Yes, it can be reversed one. You go back, the indigenous tribes are written at the gate of parliament, at the gate of parliament, at the gate of parliament, mm. they are there. Yes. 
those indigenous tribes, if you were, you were not here when this country was getting independent, mm -hmm. you should not be taken as if you are part of this country. How? I'm telling you. But today, why, we, how can you address this? We are a country that even welcomes refugees. Refugees? Are, why, why are you calling them refugees? Refugees are refugees. Even they are called refugees. And they are kept in two camps. Have you seen? Mm -hmm. But here, what I'm saying you is see, the community of an Indian, you, you of another country. You, you see, you Ugandans yourselves, mm. you have your people that have given back to children mm. in the US and elsewhere, mm. and these children are citizens there. Even when they are here doing work and no. whatever, they are citizens. My brother, I want you to there. understand me. It's recognized. What I, I want you to understand me. The mm. constitution says, of Uganda says, that every, every Ugandan has the right to live everywhere. Do you agree with that? Exactly. It is a constitutional provision. You are limiting some. But I'm talking about a community shifting to occupy other communities. Okay. I'm talking about citizens of Rwanda moving massively from Rwanda to occupy indigenous tribes of Uganda and overtake the ancestral land, take over politics and take over the entire country. How can it be reversed? It can be reversed if the 